In our last video, we went over payback period and net present value. In this video, we're going to discuss the third concept of this unit. I thought it was on a highlighter here. And the third concept is the internal rate of return, uh, often abbreviated as IRR. So when I think about internal rate of return, what I generally think is like, what percentage return and am I getting on an investment, right? So I decide to buy a machine. The machine is going to produce future cash flows or, or savings over the, the coming years. What's my return on that investment? Basically count, accounting for, for discounted cash flows. Um, so uh, the way you compute internal rate of return is you basically take the net present value of those uh, uh, future payments, uh, but the the interest rate or the you know the discount rate is something you have to calculate. And basically, you want to take uh, the net present value and make that net present value zero. Whatever interest rate gives you zero net present value, that's the internal rate of return of this investment or proposed investment. So, to do internal rate of return is actually a lot more complicated in terms of like calculating and it involves some trial and error or it involves a financial calculator or Excel to do it very easily. And so I would suggest to you, if you're in a class that has you doing internal rate of return, most often, most scenarios, you'll be doing it with a financial calculator. I don't have a financial calculator app here, so I'm gonna show you how to do it in Excel and kind of hopefully try to explain it as I go. So I'd like to look at this scenario. We buy a $100,000 machine. We think it's going to pay $25,000 a year or you know generate $25,000 a year in cash flow for five years. No residual value, no anything. Just That's it, right? Uh, and so as, as we mentioned before, that's $125,000 in future cash flows for a 100 grand machine. Hey, maybe it's worth investing in. Who knows, right? What's the internal rate of return of such an investment? Well, here's how we do it. So I'm going to just pull down Excel here. Uh, come on, you. Oh. Uh, what is going on? I feel like I'm stuck. Oh my goodness. I'm going to uh, try that again. I got to open it again. That was ridiculous. Uh, Excel. There we go. Okay, blank workbook. So we have this $100,000 investment, negative 100,000. Uh, that's our initial investment. And then, so this is year zero, year one. Hopefully this will fill over year two, year three, year four, year five. Yes. So year one, the thing's going to generate twenty-five thousand in positive cash flow. Year two, twenty-five thousand dollars in positive cash flow. Year three, year four, year five. So remember how net present value works. We take the present value of all of these twenty-five thousands and. Uh, apply it against the present value of this 100,000 negative, but the present value of that is, of course, just 100,000. So uh, we're basically deducting the 100,000 from the present value of those future payments. Now, the dilemma is we don't know our discount rate, right? That's what we're computing. We want the discount rate here to be whatever number makes that present value zero. So we could get this through trial and error. In fact, that's what I want to do right now. Um, so when I did the present value before in the, the previous video, we did the present value with a discount rate of, as you can see there, 10%. And what we ended up with, this was a negative 5231. We said, okay, this wouldn't be an investment we would make because it, it presents a negative present value. So obviously that was with a discount rate of 10%. If we make the discount rate higher, that'll make the present value even lower. We don't want to do that. We want to make the, the discount rate a little lower because we want to get to zero. So a lower discount rate 
will make these future cash flows worth more and uh, hopefully that'll get us to zero. So let's try with a discount rate. Last time was 10%, let's try 9%. And again, this is trial and error. I'll show you a quicker, easier way to do it, but I just kind of want to demonstrate what's going on here. Okay, so actually let me do this in an Excel way. One, two, three, four, five. Just stating the years so it's a number so I can uh, use it in a formula. So if I want the present value of this cash flow, I go equals 25,000 divided by one plus uh, the percentage raised to the power of, and to raise the power of, you just hit shift six, you'd get one of the little hats, that number. And I'm gonna lock in that percentage, F4. Oops, I didn't lock in the percentage. To lock in, you just put dollar signs in front. Okay, so the present value of $25,000 discounted at 9% is 22, and I can fill that formula over, and you can see those numbers. So, adding that all up, Oops, equals sum. Adding all those numbers up, I get 97,241, a difference of 100,000 minus 97,241. I'm still at negative 2759. Remember, I will know my internal rate of return when this equals zero, the present value equals zero, but it's 2759, not right. So let's try another one. Okay, so 9% didn't work. Let's try 8%. Oh, I'm getting close. You can see the present value. Now, I did this all with formulas because I want it to all work. That's why I did it in Excel, make my life a little easier. I'm at negative 182. Uh, let's go to 7%. 7%, I'm at positive 2505. So clearly I'm between seven and 8%. I'm seven point something percent. Let's try 7.5%. Okay, gotta be a little higher. Oops, let me go some more decimals. Let's try 7.7%, 7.8%. Nope, still not there. 7.9%, getting close. And then it would be like 7.91%. Uh, 7.92%. I want to get it right to zero. 7.93%. Okay, that's, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm close enough. 7.931%. Uh, okay, there's a zero. Beautiful. 7.931%. That is my discount rate. That is my internal rate of return. My discount rate that sets the net present value to zero of these future cash flows deducted from the initial investment, 7.931% uh, is my internal rate of return. Oh my God, what a pain that was. And can you imagine doing this by hand? Never gonna happen, just never gonna happen. What a, a ridiculous pain that would be. Um, so uh, how are we gonna do this then? Well, thankfully your calculator, you can solve for interest rates with a financial calculator and even easier in Excel. So let's just delete all this stuff. Delete, I'm gonna delete this and I don't even need that row. So all I have to do is lay out my cash flows and I go equals IRR bracket. And then you just go, you highlight with your cash flows. There's my cash flows. Close the bracket, you hit enter. You can see it's 8%, but it's 7.931. Well, it's really 9308, but 7.931%. There is my internal rate of return. I know this was a nine minute video. Maybe I could have done it in five seconds and said just equals IRR bracket, but I just kind of wanted to show you how the internal rate of return was calculated, what the computer was doing behind the scenes. I'm not sure how algorithmically they, they do it. I don't think they do trial and error like I did. I'm sure there's a more sophisticated, better way to solve it, but uh, that's basically what's happening, right? We got the, the correct answer uh, through that trial and error method, but it's a lot easier just to use a financial calculator or even easier, I think, in Excel just to lay out your cash flows and go equals IRR bracket and then, you know, the, the list of cash flows. So hope this was helpful for you in understanding internal rate of return.